What's going on guys? So we have an interesting project today. In the back of the golf cart, you see a pump. Now this is a hydraulic pump. It is for one of my trailers. And that trailer apparently has a bad pump on it because it's not working for me, which is really unfortunate because when I need to use a trailer and the pump's not working, obviously I can't use the trailer. And that's probably the only downside to having hydraulic landing gear on anything that requires a pump. Anyways, we're gonna get this moved out to the trailer. We'll show you what's going on. Hang tight, I'll be right back. There we go. Got everything I'll need. And hop in the golf cart and head over to the tilt deck trailer. It's not too far away, but since I'm carrying a bunch of stuff with me, it definitely makes it more convenient to have everything with you, especially when I have to carry the uh, pump over there and then take the old pump out. And here we are. Okay, so the problem we have going on, and you always gotta make sure you don't have any wasp or yellow jacket nests that form under here. Okay, so this is the KTI pump that comes on this trailer and it's just not functioning. So we'll go up or down. Uh, now this is a two function or two-way pump, which means it's electric up and electric down, mainly because the landing gear need to be able to retract off the ground. If it were a one-way pump where I could simply raise the trailer up by extending the landing gear, then I would only be listening for really one click in the motor to turn on. But because it's a two-way pump and I need to be able to retract the gear not just off the ground, but all the way up, I'm hearing two clicks and also no movement there. I have tested uh, to make sure that I'm getting power everywhere that I need to get power. I've tested uh, my connection here. I've even checked the pump independently. I've replaced the solenoid and still no dice. Hasn't been working. So my next step is going to be to remove this pump. The good folks over at Texas Pride uh, provided me a replacement pump at no cost, which is really nice. And I hear that they do that for a lot of folks. I hear that they absolutely step up to cover any type of issues with their trailers. I've experienced that, um, even though I haven't really had many issues with my trailers. But this specific uh, unit is definitely one that's been giving me a bit of a, a headache. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect power, make sure that we don't have any opportunity here to, to damage or short out any of the new equipment. And once we do that, I will be able to start the process of removing this pump. Okay, so we have the positive, negative removed from the pump. It's really only two wires. Everything else is just kind of included together. This over here is for the remote, which we can simply take off as well. And they sent me a new remote for it also. So we'll get that part taken off and that's gonna be pretty much it. Ground was right here, power's right here. The way this works, in case you wanna know, is that this is kinda of like a relay solenoid. So when you're not operating the pump, this is essentially no power coming from the solenoid to the pump itself. This is a power bus bar. And then your ground, of course, is always connected directly to the battery. This right here is where power comes in from the battery, which I've disconnected. And when you press the button, it connects these two together. So power passes through to here, while at the same time also triggering the correct valve over here. This valve right here, I believe is the valve that extends and this valve is the valve that retracts. I might have that backwards. This one's probably the one that retracts and this one's the one that extends. So again, all this does is when you press the button, it provides power across here, it connects these two into one of these valves, depending on which way you're going. And that's all it really acts as. It's a way of allowing a small wire from the remote to control a large amount of power. So this acts as kind of like a wall switch. When you flip the switch, it connects these two together to allow pa power to pass from here to here. That's all it is. Anyways, just two bolts holding it on, I believe, from the bottom. Once we get those bolts off, we should be able to remove the whole pump assembly. Okay, so we have the old pump out right here. And you can see how the bottom of it looks real wet. So because the nose of this has been dipped down, water has been able to run in and get into the toolbox, as you can see right here. I'm gonna drill a couple holes in the bottom here, clean that out. I'm also gonna try to clean some of this out, a bunch of nasty 
gunk in here. So we're gonna do our best to, uh, to get this space nice and clean. And again, put a couple drain holes in here so we just don't have to deal with this problem again. Okay, so used my nifty scraper. Got quite a bit of it out. Looks a lot better than it did. I drilled, what, six holes. Two on that side, four on this side. Just in the event water gets in here. Just gotta clean up some of the metal shards. But looks a lot better. And I think we'll be in much better shape now to uh, reinstall everything and not have to worry about moisture buildup in the bottom of this. Okay, so we've removed everything from the old pump and installed it on the new pump. Tightened it all down. Just need to put it back in its spot, bolt it in place, and test it out. One thing I forgot to do is buy hydraulic fluid, and I'm not going to reuse the old stuff, just in case water or something got into it, and that possibly could have damaged the motor. But, yep, we're going to go ahead and swap this out and see how it works. Okay, so we have everything done other than fill it up with hydraulic fluid. This project took about an hour and 15 minutes. Part of it's recording, part of it's trying to remember what to record, part of it was going back to grab some tools. Uh, it's not a very difficult project to do, but you have some tight quarters to work in here and some of these hoses aren't very flexible, so you have to move things around until you can kind of align it properly to tighten things back on. That probably took the most time. Getting it unbolted and swapping out was super fast because it's just two bolts. So there's two bolts underneath here. There's no bolts here. There's no bolts back there. Uh, I guess the fluid itself doesn't weigh enough and there's not enough jostling for it to, to really be an issue. The bolt size is 9 sixteenths. I've got everything wired up. We have power going to it. Um, it works, I already tested it just to make sure it would come on. I don't wanna test it any more than I did until I put fluid inside of it. And there is a fill mark on here. I just have to remember where that fill mark is because it was somewhere on the side right here and it told you when it was full and when it was empty, kind of like coolant in a car. And I, for some reason, can't remember where I saw that. So I'm gonna to hunt that back down. Other than that though, this uh, was a pretty quick install. I'm just going to fill this thing up with some fluid as soon as I can run to the store to go get some, and then we'll test it out. Okay, so we have just filled up our hydraulic fluid to the fill level, which I found in a picture when I had the pump on the side of the trailer. We're gonna put the cap on. Okay, let's see what happens. There we go. Check it out. That's exactly what I want to see. That is working perfect now. And again, when I lower it, you're going to hear it. Yep, that's exactly the way it's supposed to work. Let's get this thing way up there. Check that out. This thing is so, so, so convenient when it comes to loading certain types of equipment and then being able to hitch it up to the truck super quick because of this hydraulic system. But when your hydraulics go out, when your pump goes out, when you're having a problem with your hydraulics, it is not as easy and it is not as useful anymore because that typically means your system is no longer gonna function or at least you won't be able to hitch to your trailer. Perfect. It's a little loud, but that's exactly the sound I wanna hear right now. I'm super happy and uh, ready to get this thing back to use because you know, when you look at a trailer that you want to use and you can't use it because of something like this, it really bums you out. Anyways, I want to give a big shout out to the folks over at Texas Pride Trailer, their service department in particular, for getting me this replacement pump. I've heard nothing but really good things from them, uh, from customers who've used them and purchased trailers in terms of their customer service. So um, that's one area that just like a tractor or anything else you buy, the service oftentimes is the make or break it part of it. The fact of, you know, do you get good service and how quickly can they get stuff to you and does it fix your problem? And in my case, I am ready to go again. Love it. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.